All right, I'll start a little intro off. Welcome to the Second Opinion Podcast. We're happy to have you. We have Cecil Fielder here. And we also have, of course, Krishna Tuari here as well. Let's get going. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to see you. It's been a while. No, no, it's always good to see you, Doc. It is amazing to always see you. It's nice to see you ni- nice and healthy looking, too. I know. I'm not in the a hospital uniform and stuck to a bed for a week, so I'm doing a lot better than I was. So yeah. then uh, people listening don't think we just have a really sick guy here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what's what's your background? What do you got going on? <laughs> well, not, I don't have anything going on right now, but my background is I'm a baseball player. I was a baseball player anyway for 14 years in the major leagues, but I played pretty much my whole life. Uh, we were just talking about my son also played. He's a, he played 12 years in Major League Baseball, and we ended up with the same amount of home runs, 319. So there you go. That's wow. really got to be a record. Like, I feel like no one else has that. That will never happen again. No, I don't no, think it will not either. Not father and son. Oh, People hey. will try. I don't think they will. No, I don't think you can try. That ain't something That's, you can no, try. No, yeah, you can't happen. really try. Mm-hmm. And the only That's reason, a genetic, like, like a genetic but, destiny. Farce, but the right? only like, reason it happened, he had a neck injury. He had two surgeries on his okay. neck, and uh, – he had to retire, so mm. he he could have really ended up in the five hundred home run club. He's wow. he was he was that good. He was wow. that good. So you grew up in L.A., correct? Yes, sir. Born and raised. Yes, sir. And then, so what made you want to get into baseball? You knew as a little kid that you were going to be something, or well, when I was a kid, you know, everybody in the neighborhood played baseball. You know, I played baseball in little league, and then I stopped uh, playing baseball until my junior year of high school. You know, I I love basketball. Matter of fact. Mm-hmm. You know, I was the uh, second Gabriel Valley Player of the Year. I was an all-state basketball player, and I really loved basketball. So I played that, and then one day my dad, my junior year, <laughs> asked me to go play baseball. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I'm, you know, that's kind of my time to relax and kind of Junior chase, year? Yeah, wow. kind of chase the girls around. And, <laughs> but then he said, hey, man, you know, you can make a hell of a career out of baseball. I know you— you know, you got a lot of offers to play football in college, but, you know, the longevity is in baseball. I right. thought about that for a minute, and I took my – this is really what happened. Mm-hmm. I took my recruiting trip to USC, and they had a lineman there, and everybody pretty much knows him. His name was Anthony Munoz. Uh-huh. He's a Hall of Fame uh, offensive yeah, lineman. Yeah, name. And I was going to have to hit that guy every single play, and I think that changed my mind. <laughs> wow. I just, and then I went out to the baseball field and started playing baseball. Wow, it was it was a it was one of those things. It was crazy how it happened, but I that's exactly how it really happened. I just said, okay, I'm gonna play. My high school coach would walk around with a uniform every day. Yeah, like I got a uniform for you if you want to play. I'm like, oh. So how did that work? So you're, you're you're being recruited for football, then all of a sudden you're changing channels and saying, hey, I'm gonna do baseball, and then you start reaching out to all the colleges. No, and... I didn't reach out to anybody. No one. It huh? was totally different back then. I mean, you know. The, the scouts back then would come around all the time. Like they, to practice? Yeah, they would, they would be there. In they person, be, you know each yeah, other very well. There was no internet. I mean, yeah. we didn't have any internet or nothing like that, so they had to come. Wow. And I think that made I think that made uh, the game a lot better because that it was a personal level, not right. just video and things of that nature. I think, you know, my era was a great era for sport. Yeah. Mm, now you era. send, like, your highlight reels oh, to all the scouts. Yeah. Oh, number, I mean, some you know— the scout that signed me, you know, he look, he's a legend now because yeah. I was an unknown. Yeah. You know, Guy Hansen, he 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 picks me in the fourth round of the secondary phase. There's not even a secondary phase in the draft anymore. Wow. So he he just took a he just took a he really took a shot at it. He didn't nobody knew if I was gonna make it or not. He just yeah. took a shot at it. So were you always growing up athletic? Like always. You, you would oh go hit the gym every day? And... No. No. It was just genetic. You know, my family, are, I have a family of athletes. You yeah. Know, uh, you know, my cousin, my first cousin is Ricky Williams. He won the Heisman Trophy. He played yeah. in the NFL. I mean, my son, you know, played 12 years in Major League. My family's athletic. My father was all CIF in 1955. He was all wow. state. So my family is, is athletic. I mean, we just, our genes, we got great genes. That's crazy. Yeah. Any grandkids yet? Oh, what? Grandkids? <laughs> I got five of them. What? Yeah, I got Any five. Any great grandkids? Not yet. It's co- getting close. Because <laughs> I'm about to say, you're about to have a lot of yeah, athletes my coming oldest, up. My oldest grandson just finished high school. He, matter of fact, he's uh, he's doing some athletic stuff at IMG down in Sarasota. Wow. What's he, what's he going to get into? He's a baseball player like his father. You know, mm-hmm. Prince was his dad. But my younger grandson, Hayden, 
uh, he's going to be an athlete too. So we got a couple coming. We got about three or four of them coming. Wow. So you went to then UNLV, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then how long did you stay there for? I stayed there one year, and that was the best move I could have ever made. Really? In my life. Wow. Yeah, one year. Way too much going on. Way too much. I mean, Las Vegas <laughs> is not good for an eighteen-year-old kid. <laughs> so you know, it's not good for any age. Well, it really wasn't good for me. I mean, I think at that time, you know, I wasn't really doing it in school. You know, it was a playground. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was. Whew. So I told my mom, you know, the best thing for me to do is, you know, grow up and become a man and get out there and try to hustle and try to make it in baseball. And that's what I did. I just, you know, took the offer and went and hustled. Just worked my butt off and, and, you know, the rest is history. How does that transition work from UNLV to pro? Well, it's a tough transition because, number one, I think the number one thing is, is, you know, I had to talk to my son who's going off to college to play football I just told him, you know, once you become 18 years old, it's nobody else's fault. I mean, you have no excuses. It's not you have to take the bull by the horns and become a man quickly. You know, my mother told me, you know, my door is one way in and no way back in. You mm-hmm. don't come in no more. If Once you leave, that's it. And I had to grow up quite. I had to grow up fast. Different era, but, you know, uh, we spoil our kids to death. But I just had to have that talk with him, you know. You got to take the bull by the horns, man. You got to make the best of it that you can because I can't help you no more once you get to college. You got coaches, you got people that you're accountable to, and you got to do what you got to do. There's no more dad can go talk to your coach and tell him that, hey, my son needs to play. No, that shit's over with. You got to go get it. You got to go get it. Yeah, we're way past that now. (laughs) Yeah, you got to go get it. Yeah. You got to go get it. I mean, you got to burn that midnight oil. And I told the kids, I had a little speaking in games last week. And I told the kids, you got to do more than the other guy. Mm-hmm. You just can't do what the other guy does and, and just be mediocre. If you want to be great, you got to do up and above what everybody's doing. You know, right. it's a thing like Michael Jordan. You know, he was going to be the last man on the basketball court. You wasn't going to be there longer than him. Kobe. I read on Kobe Same when thing. he was at the uh, Olympics in China. Same thing. Or uh, was it China or the one the year after? I can't, or the Olympic after. But everyone was partying the night before. They were coming back at 4 or 5 a.m. And they'd see Kobe coming down the elevator to going go to, to work. the gym. Well, that's the same thing. And then thing everyone that... started saying, wow, this guy. No, same thing. This guy's got some discipline. Allen Iverson said the same thing. Allen Iverson said, you know, he and Kobe went out to dinner. And Allen Iverson said he was going out to the to the club and asked Kobe if he wanted to go with him. And Kobe said, no, I'm going to the gym to work out. That's I mean, those are – that's why you have – that's why you have Greatest. an athlete like Kobe Bryant or mm-hmm. like Michael Jordan, you know. Or like in our game, you know, Babe Ruth used to go out and party with the best of them, right? But mm-hmm. he was a great athlete. You got guys like Hank Aaron, you know, you got Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds rarely went out, rarely went out. And to me, in my era, that's the best player to play the game. Barry Bonds, yeah, really? no doubt. I wow. I don't care about the steroids. Yeah. It, it is what it is. But even before he did steroids, he was yeah. the best player in baseball. I feel like nowadays steroids are a lot. They're more normalized now than they were back they then. They shouldn't be, but they yeah, are. Yeah, they shouldn't be, but they, they are. They, I mean, you know. People, like, brag about it now, doing it. Guys are getting away with it. You know, even some of the guys that have gotten to the Hall of Fame, I feel, that have done it. And that's mm-hmm. why I'm saying, you know, you can't keep, you know, Barry and Roger out of the Hall of Fame. Right. Because you got guys in there that's done it. And you know that they've done it. Mm-hmm. So how did they, when you were, when you were in college, playing your first year, were people doing it? I didn't really see. I, Were you exposed I, to that no, or anything like that? No, I didn't really get exposed to it until I was in the big league. I really didn't even think of it. I never done. Didn't right. have to. But I never even thought about it until, you know, you start looking at some of the guys and you're going, man, he. <laughs> he wasn't he, as big last yeah, year right? or just a, or two yesterday. weeks ago. Yeah. You know, the first time I really <laughs> recognized that something was going on, Jose Canseco and I played. Um, I remember Jose, yeah. We played rookie ball together and he was about. You know, he was tall, six foot four, six foot five, about 180 pounds. Yeah. Well, two years later, you know, Jose's about 230 pounds. And I'm like, okay. I remember having his baseball card as a kid and trading it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. That was my man. Jose's a good guy, but, you know, that was his, that was his thing. He told people, yeah, I did it, you know. And to he me, owned up to it. Yeah, to me, that's, hey, I got to I gotta respect that. He, you know, he ain't trying to say no. He said he did it. Mm. And when it went when, when when all broke loose, mm-hmm. he was the one that was telling the people who did it, and they were they were hot at that because so oh, Jose, they were Jose mad. Knew. Yeah, Jose wow. knew who was doing it. I know, and not to get on him, but I know that that may have exposed some of the steroid use back then as well, because I think he got 
had a bad tam- or he's known for a bad temper. Yeah, and he had, had some, some issues with his ex-wife, issues, ex-wife, and, yeah, and all yeah. that stuff. If I remember but correctly. But I, I, I think you know, guys just don't know what that's going to do to him later on in life. You know, yeah. later on in life, man, you yeah. put your body through enough, right? Yeah, and you start doing that stuff, ain't no telling what's going to happen. Wow. You know, and he was on TV and his manlyhood went away. His girlfriend was like, they had a show about Jose. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a long time. They made a show? Yeah. He was, he was, you it's know. like a reality show. Yeah. Right? He was or going something? through it. He was going through it. He, he He's going to see all these doctors because of the steroid use, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Jesus. That's a wow. lot. And I seen him the other day. He looks great. Yeah? He still looks like he can play. <laughs> you look like you can still play. I yeah. know. I said, you ever hit the hit no. the ball around? He's like, hell no. <laughs> Thrill is gone. Thrill is gone. So tell me about the excitement of, I mean, you know, growing up, going wanting to play football, then, then now decided to play baseball. You went to UNLV. Now you're like, I'm going to turn pro. Now, now I, I, I love hearing how – the excitement is like you're gonna you're you're thinking about turning pro like you're that good to turn pro. I don't know if I was that good back then, but I you know I worked my butt off. I I, I think uh, you know in in baseball, uh, it wasn't natural like the other two sports, mm-hmm. basketball and football were to me. You know, baseball I had to really work at it. It was what does not that mean? Easy. Work at it in baseball? <clears throat> I had to I had to put in extra work. I had to do you know I had to, more batting practice, more ground balls. I had to do more than everybody else to to be. To make myself a good player, mm-hmm. you know, because it's like, you know, yeah, I made it to the big leagues in 85, so I, 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 I got drafted in 82, so I was in the big leagues at 85, but in 89, I went to Japan, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, there was some more work to be done. And you went to Japan? Yeah, I played in Japan one year, 1989. Then came back and hit 50 home runs. So, again, wow. I, I mean, I was just evolving into who I was supposed to be. You know, it was, it was a rough hustle. Yeah. You know, my roommate just got... Uh, got that Hall of Fame call, Fred McGriff. Uh huh. So that was my my roomie. My that was my uh, first roomie ever. Wow. And uh, we're all gonna be there for him. Uh, on Did you Hall all know, day. like, when you're all together, like, look, I'm gonna make it one day. Like, no, yeah, I mean, man, you don't have you have those aspirations. That, right. Yeah, I want to. I want to make it, but yeah. I mean, dude, there's a draft every year. I mean, yeah. there's players coming in every year. Do you think that's why people did steroids so much? No, I think people did what they had to do to, to try pressure. to stay. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure. I mean, stay in it. to stay, I mean, you, you know, you can get to the big They always say it's kind of easier to get there. Mm-hmm. It's really tough to stay. Mm. And that's the part of it. Because there's so many people aiming Man, for your position. Every every year there's a draft. Yeah. So if you play 14 years, there's 14 first basemen that were drafted by your organization. So, again, you know, just longevity is key. Right. Mm-hmm. You guys knew, did you did it come all those years for you to realize that, or or going into it, the knowledge was there, like you kept your egos in check? No, no, you knew, no, 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 you knew you had you had to compete. Yeah, I mean, shit, you had to compete. I mean, there's nothing better than competition. Right, I, I agree. Think that brings the best out in all of us. Hundred percent to have that competition, to have somebody trying to take what you got. Right, it, bring, it wakes and you're everyone up. Have it. Yeah, I, I'm like, no, 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 you ain't ready yet, bro. It ain't time. I'm gonna stay here for a while. The lion woke up, and now you're the Lion King, right? Oh yeah, you gonna and you want to stay there. You want to yeah. stay there, man. I mean, that's a, I mean, it's a tough hustle to stay, but you want to stay. There. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, there's just so many great ball players from, you know, Mark McGuire and I were in high school at the same time, right around the same city. You know, Mark yeah. McGuire. I mean, you got uh, Barry Bonds was Riverside, right up the road from me. I mean, uh, Reggie Miller, his yeah. sister. I mean, all these California athletes, uh, Eric Davis, Daryl Strawberry, you name it. I mean, Darryl we had so many yeah, athletes come from my area that, you know, the competition was fierce. Right. You know, who's going to be the best this week? And that's how we used to do it, you know, especially in basketball. Who's going to be Who's going to be in the paper this week? Wow. Who, who's going to be the guy? I can't in the imagine paper that week? type of competition. I mean, as doctors oh, and real. in the medical field, work. I mean, work. I mean. You guys are I think people say I'm the most competitive yeah, person competitive. that there can be, and I, and I like to say I am, but for good reasons being, because I do believe competition brings out the best. It really people. does. I, I believe and it that puts 100%. our ego in check too. It's like, wow, he did it, and I did not do it. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, you know, it's the same thing with my kids. You know, I get on them all the time. I tell them, "You okay?" Yeah. You know, I don't. I don't give them. I. You know, I don't know why, but I can't give them. You know that you you're you're good. No, no. You you're can't okay. praise them. No, I can't because. You th- no, 
You got to get better. You, yeah. you, you're good, but you got to get I, better. I, I lectured uh, K squared over here, K2, Katie, the, a couple of days ago saying, we have to make things perfect. And I was saying, and she goes, what's perfect. wrong with you? Like, did you drink extra coffee or something? <laughs> like, no, this is how we become better. This no, is what we to. do. You always have to look at other things Man. and grow from that. I and so, so, so you're not giving out uh, participation trophies? No. no. <laughs> but you know what I do? You know what I do do? I, I tell the kids all the time, because I think it's very important that they understand that there's always room to get better. I mean, you're not done with your journey until they tell you you can't do it anymore. Correct. So you have to burn the midnight oil to get better, whatever that is. And you work on the things that you're not that good at. If you do something well, that's something that you really don't have to work as hard on. But what you don't do well is what you need to work on. Right. So for me, I was never, ever going to be a great, great fielder, but I worked on it to make myself a good fielder, right? Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to be a great base runner, but I worked on it, and I became a good base runner. So the things that you're not good at, you have to try to get better at. Wow. And the only way you do that is to work harder. Psychologically, when you were in this competition phase in your early years and you know college, transitioning to pro, how did that affect you? Did, in, in, in any way, did it create any like anxiety? No, did it create no, any no, – are it, you living it, off it, endorphins? It, no, no, you are. I'm, burn, I'm burning up. I, inside, I'm like, oh, man. Because I wasn't the guy. So I'm, I'm going to give you an example. So in rookie ball, I wasn't the guy. We had another guy, Joe Joe Satari, mm -hmm. my roomie again. <laughs> he was one of my Man, roomies. I would love to be a fly in the wall yeah. for the places you so, <laughs> Joe Satari, we're, we're, in, we're in Butte, Montana. Now, a kid from L.A. Yeah. Going to Butte, Montana. That was like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so he was the man. But what happened was they start playing me. And Joe switching his flip flop. One day he played first, I DH. One day he DH. I ended up hitting 20 home runs in in 60 games. Wow! Right. So I was, uh, I wasn't the player. I wasn't the MVP of the league, but I was pretty close. So I ended up getting traded for a major league ball player that winter uh -huh. from Kansas City Royals to the Toronto Blue Jays. So now. Coming to the Blue Jays, I'm kind of the man now. Right. You know? So that's how competition is. I wasn't, and now I am. Right. And that's competition. I love that part of the game. I love that part of anything. I mean, if we were playing dominoes, right. I'm going to try to beat I don't know, you. Exactly, oh, right? I hate losing. No, I'm not losing. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna yeah. to try. And, you know, I had to kind of take it easy on my younger son because he's like, you know, I can't just beat the <laughs> crap out of him. I got to let yeah, him yeah. listen. So yeah, you gotta lure him in a little yeah, bit, right? Competition, people are gonna hate it. <laughs> competition is one of the greatest things in the world. I agree. I agree completely. That's you know, I think it it brings the best of who we are and and our potential. I don't think the inner potential is always unlocked with competition. If you didn't have no competition, everything would be easy. Yeah, you'd stay stagnant. Yeah, you're the man. You'd all be like, the time. this is fun. Yeah. Exactly. Because that's you all know? you know. Exactly. But then that will not make you any better because now you become complacent. Exactly. Right? Well, you know, I'm going to tell you, even in, in all my teams, I had great players. You know, even when I was young, there were great players on my team in Toronto, right? Mm -hmm. And when I went to Detroit, I had great players. I got Tr Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer, Lou Whitaker, who's going to be a Hall of Famer, Kurt Gibson, great player, Chet Lemon, great player. I mean, Jack Moore's Hall of Famer. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had great guys on my team. I mean, you got to step up. Yeah. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna hold you to a certain standard, right? Yeah. They're not gonna let you just come in there and just be mediocre and just get by just being mediocre. No, no, you got to get to the next level because a guy like Gibby, Kurt Gibson, he's gonna stay on you until you reach that potential. Yeah. You got to get it. You got to come to work every day to get it. First and one in, last one out. And that's how I learned. I learned how to come to the ballpark. No matter how I felt, I had to come get it. I had to get myself mentally prepared. If I was hurting, you know, if something hurt, I had to figure it out. Get what in there. What did you do? What do you mean when you're hurting? Man, you get <laughs> you in the weight through. room. You have a cup of coffee. You <laughs> If you got to go in the tub and, and, Ice and, tub. and whatever you got to do. You, and, you So basically I come in. At one o'clock, I got mm -hmm. until five o'clock to figure this out. Man, so that game was over last night, ten o'clock. You know, I have dinner, get home, go to bed. 
I'm up by probably, you know, eight or nine, you know, shaking it off at the ballpark by one, and I got to figure it out by five. Are you taking, like, Tylenol and a leave and, like, you know, I'm whatever, taking, like, I'm stops taking, your pain? Uh, uh, you know, anti- anti-inflammatories. Yeah. And you know, I got a wrist that's still broke. I played a whole year with a broke wrist, and I never wow. got it fixed. Oh, my God. No, Did you break anything else and just play uh, through No, it? I had I – bro- you know, I, I wasn't on the disabled list uh-huh. in – 18 years minor league and, and major league ball until my last year, I broke my thumb. Ooh. You might have needed to be, but you probably, just, yeah. <laughs> you just didn't so want to be. Yeah, I, yeah, I needed some time, but I, man, you got to work. You got to you got to work it out. That's mm-hmm. that was my mentality. A quarter zone shots, my shoulders, probably ten in this shoulder, probably seven in this shoulder. Wow, what's I mean, it feel like now? Oh, like, they hurt every day. Oh, they hurt. But again, figure it out. What do I have mm-hmm. to do? Because listen. My thing is the only way for me, the only way for us to win is for me to be available to play. Mm. Wow. Figure it out. Out of curiosity, when you played then and you had that mindset, how is that different from when you see professional sports today? Because a different game. It's surrounded by a medical team. Different it's surrounded game. by technology. Surrounded by, I mean, you're being like you know escorted by a medical service team. I'm gonna tell and, you a story. This is how I. This is how I look at the game nowadays. To when I play, I'm gonna just go off of Jack Morris, a Hall of Fame pitcher we had in Detroit. Mm-hmm. So it's the eighth inning; he's winning two to one against Minnesota. Kirby Puckett is gonna be the first hitter of the next inning, right? Right. So Sparky Anderson walks up to Jack and tells Jack, uh, "Jack, I can't let you lose this game. If Puckett gets on, I'm coming to get you. I'm taking you out of the game." Mm-hmm. Jack told Sparky, "Don't you come out there? Told him, don't you come to the mound?" So, boom, Curry Puckett, base hit. Here comes Sparky to the mound to get Jack. Jack is cussing, fussing like crazy, but here comes Skip. You know, Skip would come out there and he'd duck his head and he'd just put his hand out for you to give him the ball. Jack throws a BB in his hand, right? So Jack walks off the mound and goes to the dugout. And Sparky looks at me and says, look what that SOB did to my hand. His hand is just black and blue. Wow. That's the difference from when I played and to now. My guys didn't want to come out. These guys are looking to come out. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, five innings, six innings, that's it. Bring the next one in. And guy like Jack Morris, no, nah, he want to finish. And that's the difference in the Even game. if he's going to throw his whole shoulder. He's huh? going to finish. And that's why he's in the Hall of Fame. Wow. That mindset, huh? Man, you got to I wonder be a, what changed. You got to be a killer, man. Well, I mean, I mean, it, you could be the nicest guy in the world. I am because yeah. oh, I'm yeah, always nice to everybody, yeah. right? But when you get between the lines, man, ain't no friends. Yeah, the other team is my enemy. Did that happen a lot? No, that's you got. That's the mentality you got to have. I'm, I'm. Listen, we might go out and have dinner the night before, yeah. or... <laughs> but when that game starts, yeah. Oh, let's go. Hey, do you see me in my mind zone? Oh, I've seen it. <laughs> you know, turn it on, turn it off, right? Yeah, you got to. You have to learn how to do but that. I know when that game starts, I got Dave Stewart, one of my best friends in the world. Yeah. Dave Stewart and I have been friends forever. It got so bad. I hit him so well. It got so bad that his his teammates thought he was telling me what was coming. I used to wear his ass out. Oh, hit him out of the stadium. Yeah, I, I don't play. <laughs> I don't play. So, folks, folks that know... Like Stu and, and again in Old Milwaukee County Stadium, we had we had a day in the Old Milwaukee. You know they got a new stadium there now, but I was the only player to ever hit the ball out of the stadium in Milwaukee ever. Wow. Still? So, yeah, they don't. The stadium's not there anymore. Oh, <laughs> then, yeah. <laughs> they never have it again. So what I'm saying is, is that Dan Plesek, Dave Stewart, these guys are great pitchers now. Yeah, they ain't no poo but Stu won 20 games four years in a row. Wow. But it was just the mentality. I got to go to work. I got to figure it out. My whole thing is always figure it out. Right. I mean, you keep a book on all these pictures. You know what they're going to do. You got to do your homework. Mm -hmm. And I tell kids that nowadays it's this. uh, Looking at the video, looking at the images. I'm going to do my own homework. I know what he does. I know exactly what Stu is going to do. I know that Stu has got a lot of pride, and he's going to come in here. He's coming after me. He's throwing fastballs. He's coming. And I'm going to be ready for it. You think everything that you trained for for baseball all those years, you're better in your personal life now? And you're, like, taking care of yourself? And Well, I don't know. I think we did so much damage to our bodies, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. You know, I've been through it. I and mean, we'll probably get into that a little later. But I've been, you know, 
I've been through it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, even, you know, off the field, the, the aches and pains, you know, you, you just deal with it, mm-hmm. right? And I think we've, we've, we've really got ourselves to believe that, ah, it's going to be okay. Just a couple of aspirins, ah, mm-hmm. right? Well, some of the stuff that you have, it ain't a couple of aspirins. That ain't going <laughs> to do it. So we kind of tricks ourselves as players that eh, we can figure it out. It's going to be okay. We don't need a doctor. We're going to work this out ourselves, right? So it doesn't help you. No, it doesn't. It's, <laughs> it's, it, it really doesn't. I mean, if I, I, I think what has helped me over my you know last six or seven years is that I, I understand now that, you know, we're not bulletproof. I mean, I, I understand that real well. We're not bulletproof. So we have to trust in other people to make sure that we can, you know, we can make it. Because some things we just can't, I mean, we can't do it. Back then, like what was like the physical trainers, like the medic teams, you think it's way different now? Oh, no, no, please. Matter of fact, our first trainer in Detroit, he wasn't even a, he wasn't even certified. Oh, God. Yeah. Just, a, just a kid? Yeah. He, he wasn't, <laughs> Wrapping no, you up No, he wasn't tape. a kid. He was an old man. But <laughs> after that, after a couple of years there, they got the, the, the head uh, trainer from University of Michigan who came over with Bo Schimbeckler when Bo was our team president. But early on, we didn't even have a certified trainer. I mean, you just – look here. It's the, Like I said, the, the amount of money and all that's in the game right now, I mean, these Way guys different. got everything. They got everything. I mean, so was it they're like getting massages? They're... We could do that too, but these guys got it in the, in the clubhouse. Mm-hmm. I remember um, I know a couple people in baseball that said that when they're prepping for a game and you go to the stadium, you do everything. You have like a a, a layout of food and and you have layout of drinks and everything, and it sounded like kind of like a party almost. We don't. We didn't have that. They have it now because they have personal chef. Sometimes yeah. they have the prof- the. Uh, at celebrity every game chef. when they're yeah, pro- every game they have chefs. Cost. Sometimes huh? they have uh, the uh, celebrity chefs come in and cook for them. No, wow. uh, in New York. Yeah. Oh my God, I can't imagine oh the food in God. New York. Oh, my, New York is incredible. It's, yeah. it's, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's wow. totally. And the clubhouse. If you if you had a chance to go back to the old Tiger Stadium and look in our clubhouse, you would go, "This is disgusting." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you couldn't even fit all the guys in there. It was crazy, and the, and the visitors was even smaller. Uh-huh. So what I'm saying is now these big luxurious, luxurious uh, yeah. we 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 we're, we're at the ground floor of this. Wow, yeah, this is a total different height. So, so before the game, is it really serious? No, like the energy. No, no, no the energy. Everybody, you know, you play so many games in baseball. Yeah, there's a know, lot. 162 games, a lot of games. So you know. You have a roller coaster. People, you know, people's emotions are different. Mm-hmm. You know, guy who's scuffling, guy who's zero for twenty five. He's having a worse day than the guy that's mm. eight for nine in his last nine at bats. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you got a lot of emotions in there. It's, mm-hmm. it's a lot of different feelings. Guys that are on the cusp of being sent out to back to the minor league. I mean, there's just a cool. lot going on, and you know, you got to have a great manager, in which I've. I've been blessed to have great managers from uh, Bobby Cox to Sparky Anderson to Joe Torrey. I mean, I had great managers, all right. Hall of Fame managers. So I was fortunate, but a lot of guys don't have that. Mm. Wow. But you got to have a strong guy at the top to be able to lead that charge. So, you know, you got to, it, it, it takes that guy at the top to be able, uh, I would say, to kind of spread, you know, around to his soldiers. The guys that are going to be able to be the speakers in the clubhouse to keep everything in order. So, like a, a Gibson or me or in New York, or a Wade Boggs and Daryl Strawberry. I mean, we got so many guys, but you need those guys to keep the morale good. Right. You, you, you got to have that camaraderie. Uh, this is the only way to win. I, I say that myself. The only way to win is everybody's on the same page. Do do you think that that mindset of having people and, and emotionally on a roller coaster, I mean, leads to abusing substances and and drugs or alcohol or anything like that, or yeah, is there I, a, a a propensity for that to happen? That, yeah, it can happen. That 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 that's a great question. It it can definitely happen in our game because you know our game is play the game, drink. Mm-hmm. That's how it was. You play the game, you drink. I heard people would drink before the game. Well, probably so. I don't know. I I wasn't one of those guys, but I did drink after the game for sure. 
Yeah, someone was like, I played better when I drank. Well, I don't like that attitude. Yeah. I, I don't play better when I drink. I know that. <laughs> I need to go sit down somewhere. Yeah, I don't have any balance. <laughs> no, but you know, you're right. I mean, it causes a lot of things, you know. You know, even in, you know, I, I, I hear some of the football stories, but it's really the same story I hear with, with guys, you know, start taking painkillers and things right. of that nature. And, you know, taking, you know, drugs. A lot of, you know, a lot of athletes, you know, you know, we had, you know, Strawberry, one of my one of my dearest, you know, he had drug problems. Doc mm-hmm. Gooden, drug problems. I mean, we had a lot of guys that get around the wrong crowd. It's like and, accessible, and, and too. And get called out. It's accessible. Ex- yeah. You know, they had the big, uh, they had the, they had <laughs> really the big. Really accessible. What? They had the big issue back in the day with the Pittsburgh Pirates that the caterer was bringing it in. Oh, my God. To the on, clubhouse. A, on a silver platter. There you go. <laughs> wow. So that's when, when, uh. Dave Parker and all that group got in yeah. trouble for drugs. And then they started kind of weeding people out from coming in the clubhouse. I mean, that's been going on forever. Wow. Going on forever. Was there any um, control, like, with the managers or people? Would, would anything be said or it's just, like, an unwritten, understood? Well, you know, I think when things got uh, uh, to the point where they start drug testing, I think that kind of brought some guys back into the, you know, into. So they didn't even drug test when you were playing? No, not early. When, when they probably in uh, what mid? Well, they don't. No, only re, only way you get drug tested if you get caught. Got yeah, it. Yeah, like suspicious. Yeah, then we don't get drug tested. You can't just drug test me. I have to get caught. You know, so there was no one. random drug. No, test. No, no, no. Nowadays, not, it's like no, whatever we see fit. No, um, I don't think the guys still to this day get drug tested unless they've been unless you're suspicious. Well, yeah. my thing is like if the players are making you money. Why would you drug test them? Well, if you got a <laughs> That's guy. That's probably the mindset that back then. Yeah, that was the mindset when the, when the owners were making all the money. But now that the players are making that money, the owners want to make sure them players oh. are going out there to play. Right. I mean, you got a guy. You got a guy that's got a nine-year contract for three hundred sixty million dollars. You protect that his is life. Crazy. Yeah, you got to. He got to be. What do you think about that? That money. Well, hey, it's all good. You know, it's it, it's 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 really the sign of the times. I mean, we went on strike in '94. And this is the outcome of that strike. From the being play, underpaid? The players have start getting their share of the money. The owners mm. for so many years have was, was, you know, it was like a 70, uh, no, probably an 80-20 split back in the day. Wow. Right? Now it's closer to a 60-40. So in professional sports world back when it was 94, what professional athletes were making the most at okay, that time? Okay, let's go, let's, let's go right there. So... I'm going to say 1985, George Brett and my guy, uh, George Bell, were $2 million players. They were the highest players in baseball. That was 1985. $2 million a year. 1985. Now, rookie salary in 1985. Now, you got to check this out. Rookie salaries until we went on strike in 85 were $40,000 a year. What? Nobody knows. Isn't a minimum of 250 now, right? Seven fifty. Seven fifty. That's the minimum. Wow. Seven fifty. Now, the minimum when I first started was forty grand. Now we went on wow. strike and they bumped it to sixty. Right. Oh my god. That year. Okay, so that was eighty five. So now you go to ninety four. Uh, when do I get my? So ninety four, ninety five. I got my ninety four. I might have got my contract. So I was the highest paid. Me, Barry Bonds, and and David Cohn. So we got. We got we we're making about seven million a year. Mm-hmm. Wow! In ninety four. In ninety four, we're making about seven million. Now wow. these guys are making thirty million yeah. a year. So basketball then were they? They were also underpaid, right? Basketball uh, football was, horrible. was underpaid too. Horrible. Our our players' union is the best players' union in the world, right? Right. So you know a guy that in football back then had to play fifteen years, I think, to get a salary. A pension. A, a pension of eighteen thousand dollars. Oh my gosh! That's in football. Wow. Now our pension is crazy because we maximum pension whatever we can get, whatever the highest total amount of money they can give, that's what we get. Mm-hmm. So whether at that time it was one hundred twelve thousand a year, or now it's probably higher, but back then it was like one twelve five was at sixty two and a half. You can get one hundred twelve thousand a year for life. Just the number of three hundred and eighty million dollars. Yeah, that's real. That's a real number. And he ain't the only one on Crazy. that same team. So, so question: 
you got paid, you know, 40 and then went to 60. Then uh -huh. Now you sign your largest contract, your first one ever. What, what's the first thing you went and did? Oh, what'd you buy? Oh, uh, <laughs> let me see what I did with that money. Ooh, <laughs> How does it work? It gets deposited in your... You no, get, you get a signing bonus. You get a signing bonus, okay. So my signing bonus that year was $10 million. Wow. Oh, my God. But, you know, Uncle Sam got $4.7 million yeah. mm -hmm. off yeah. the top. 47%, yeah. yeah. So you know what I, I think I did? Well, I already had my houses. I did, you know what I did? 94. Yeah, I bought me a Ferrari. I bought me a, <laughs> there I bought you me go. a Testarossa 512. Oh, my gosh. That's that the first yourself. thing that I did with that salary. I got, yeah. I got bought me a Testarossa, and uh, that was it. I, and, you know, That was really your first taste of, uh, of the— No, I'd been making money. I, You know, so after I hit 50, I think I made four and a half. At first, in 1990, went to five million, six million, you know, yeah. and then it went, you know, big time. Yeah, and you had sponsorships back then too. Oh yeah, Adidas, Nike, uh, Mizuno. Because now people make more money off sponsorships than they well, do their own did. salary. We With didn't. soccer, we, they do. Yeah. We did uh, almost every sport. Yeah, yeah. we didn't. We did. our, our our salaries weren't like. I mean, our our sponsorships weren't like they are now. Yeah, these sponsors, they, these are ridiculous. They're crazy. These are ridiculous. I mean. Just, I mean, oof, even the college stuff now is ridiculous. It's all like coming NIL around. And yeah, it's coming around now. This is the way it was should have been back then. Yeah, you know these players worked hard to get that. You know, the O'Bannons, the basketball boys worked hard to get this money to these kids, and that's cool. Well, I mean, cool. the way I look at it, it's a special talent. I mean, obviously there's a lot of good genetics involved, but there's a lot of hard work, training, what you've talked about, and that's what when you guys get recruited to college or professional. That's what brings money. Yeah, but I mean, but, we, but everyone goes and watches were, you it, know, right? For years, and, and a lot of guys who, who say this in all sports, you know, colleges have been dragging this money in, the bowl money, fifteen, sixteen million dollars for these bowls, and the kids get nothing. Yeah. yeah. That day is over. These kids are gonna get some money now. It's good. Oh yeah, it's a good thing. So they really are now. College, you're gonna get it. Man, these NIL. kids are making money. As a matter of fact, I was just we were just talking about a kid that won the Heisman uh, this year from uh, USC. Mm -hmm. Uh, went to visit Eastern Michigan. They offered him five million dollars. He turned it down. Huh? Yeah. Did he have a six million offer well, somewhere probably, else? Yeah, he probably did. That's wow. why schools are essentially paying for these high school athletes through this NIL. Mm -hmm. Miami's really big with that. Do you I think mean, that's FSU? good or could get a little no, dangerous? No, I think it's great. I think, I think it's, it's good. good? I think it's great. These kids, listen, college sports have been underpaid for years. It's just really young to have that much money. I mean, yeah. we were talking about a, a professional athletes that got recruited to college. Like, they were even paying for their own housing and stuff like that. I mean, it's when I went to college, yeah. I was... 17 turning 18. So I'm like, could you imagine handing me $5 million? Yeah. I don't yeah. know what I would do <laughs> well, with it. Well, if it was your mom and dad, they put it in a trust. Yeah, they put it in a trust, yeah. right. Yeah. You, you ain't going to get that to just go wilding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're not getting your Ferrari. Yeah. Direct deposit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just go get them, kid. Just go get them. <laughs> Never sleep. How did that... Um, so, so we talked about how, obviously, we dived a little bit into lifestyle as, uh, as a baseball player, but more specifically... How were you in terms of like eating healthy and and, and having health. a regimen and well, and understanding? We know that you, obviously you your body's always hurt and you do what you can to kind of survive for the next day. But was there anything that um, you guys were doing that really like said, "Hey, we got to probably change our way how we're eating or, or focus on our bodies a little bit more"? Yeah, I, th I think everybody. I mean, it really didn't happen early on, but I think in the in the la latter in the mid nineties. You know, that's when we start getting strength coaches. We start getting, you know, uh, folks in the clubhouse, nutritionists and things like that. But, you know, I always had to watch what I did because every fucking time I had to come, excuse my language, no, uh, every good. time I came to the clubhouse, they, fuck, they wanted to weigh me in. So I wow. really had to really watch my weight. You know, wow. I was a big guy. They weren't really – see, that's the thing. When I played, they weren't really ready for big guys yet, right? right? Now everybody's big. Yeah. I You go into a clubhouse now – you see some monsters. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I don't know where that mutation happened. I don't know, man. It must be in the food or something. <laughs> Could it be uh, some yeah. big dudes, man. Processed food. I mean, no, you know, you know, a guy like Judge, he's just a big oh dude. Oh my god, he's huge. Six foot eight and can play center field. <laughs> yeah, that's, he that's can play tight end. Brady was trying but, to recruit him for but, the box. But that's the same <laughs> thing with uh, Dave Winfield back in the day. Yeah, big guy, six foot eight. When he's the only. A uh, professional athlete that I know of that was rec what, that was drafted in all three sports, baseball, basketball, and football. Wow. Trifecta. Dave Winfield. 
He was a stud. Oh my God, Hall that of is, Famer. That must be. I mean, that must be so hard. I know he. I mean, that's never gonna happen. I don't know, man. This guy was unbelievable. You see two sports. Usually, you see football, baseball. Yeah, right? yeah. Or like Dion, Dion, or, you know, uh, yeah. Bo Jackson. Yeah. But huh, Winnie was all three. Wow. Hmm. That was incredible. He's an athlete. That's crazy. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I've i seen some of the best. Bo Jackson, to me, mm-hmm. and Kurt Gibson, to me, are probably the two best, I mean, all around run, strength. I never heard anybody stomp like Bo Jackson and Kurt Gibson when they run down the first baseline. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You hear them coming. They're like grunting. I mean, it's crazy. How, oh, my God. So – Question: You obviously you ha- you come from a, a lineage and you're producing a family tree of just athletes, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Pumping them out, over yeah. There. <laughs> I mean, that's I mean, it is what it is. I'm gonna be your guy's agent <laughs> for the whole family. Uh, but uh, joking aside, do, how do you look at what we're talking about and your young, your 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 children and and their grandchildren, the future? How are you now? Um, are are you focused on like? identifying how to be healthier and how oh, to no how doubt. to speak up and how to do things no you know doubt. what you learned was bad things that you guys were doing back then or are are not even aware you know well you know even my little my young dude I got him in the gym right now he he goes to the gym Monday and Wednesdays that was his days i mean if you want to compete you got it's got to start early mm. i mean these kids you know they they're computer generated right uh, that they they love the the the, the games, but I he, he he has never had a game yet. My young guy, he's never you know he looks at his brother playing, but he's never played. So, you know, it is one of the situations where you know you want. I don't ever want any of my kids to go through what I've been through. You right. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, what do you mean by it? Like just just to I mean I, you, you know we're gonna talk about it, but I mean open heart surgery, kidney transplant. I don't want my kids to have to go. Mm. Uh, you think clocks, what you did caused I, that? No, there's a lot of things I did that caused it. It wasn't just uh, going out there and beating up my body. It was mm-hmm. a lot of things I did back then that caused it. But mm-hmm. well, was it a common thing amongst a lot of athletes? or were you, you Well, felt- there's a lot of guys now that I'm I'm finding out that are going through a lot of stuff. All I right. mean, you know, a good friend of mine, Mike Hinneman, who played on my team in Detroit, you know, got a bad liver. I mean, yeah. th- these are – can't reproduce the liver. I mean, you need mm-hmm. one to yeah. live. Yeah. You know, those have – so I'm I'm like man you know you know a uh, couple of New York Jets players that I know kidney transplant need a kidney I mean it's I think since I had my kidney transplant I think it's open up yeah I see I mean I hear a lot of things that guys are needing kidneys livers you know things it's it's really unbelievable because life is different than baseball like you, know, you lose your life that's it the lights are out right mm-hmm. you know yeah. I think that opened me up to a a lot of emotion. I mean, it was, it, 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 it was a, I had a tough time there, uh, you know, when I first uh, had my transplant. Even when I had heart surgery, I mean, I had a tough time because you realized it doesn't matter what you got or who you are. It doesn't matter because you it can be taken. Oh, I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you have 380 no, million. it don't matter. I mean, if the man upstairs says it's time for you to come to the upper room, yeah. you're going to the upper room. Mm-hmm. Time. And, and, and there's nothing you can do about it. So, you know, I was able to, you know, with your help and a lot of other folks' help, I was able to hang in there. But there were some tough times we had, right? Yeah. I mean, I thought a couple times, you know, I, I was on the verge of maybe not being here tomorrow, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it makes, it makes life more important. It mm-hmm. makes life more important for me for my children because, you know, I want to see all my children grow. And I think that was a driving force uh, for me to really – I treated it uh, almost like if I was playing. Mm-hmm. I ain't missing the day of uh, dialysis. I ain't never missing. I never missed one day of dialysis. That's what I'm saying. Ever. The way that you grew up with baseball kind of made you I, Yes, I, I took it. I had to because, you know, there was – you know, my wife, she's the greatest woman in the world. I swear she is. She but is. I know her. I, I, I can vouch for that. I was a couple times, I don't know, I didn't say I was going to give up, but I was at the point where I just said, you know, it's, I mean, come on, this is a lot. And, and for those of uh, you all out there that don't know, uh, would you like to share yeah, uh, what, what mean, happened? Yeah, I mean, I think it, that's important. And um, and um, obviously we'll we'll dive into that a little bit more, yeah. too. So tell me, what when did this at what point did you, you go to the doctor and say, okay, oh, my God. Let's talk about what that. What is going on yeah, here? Let's talk about <laughs> yeah. that. So I'm home 
I'm home one day, and uh, and this is how long ago? Oh, this is like five years ago. Okay, five years ago. So I'm at home one day, and I'm I tell the wife, I said, "Hey, I'm not, I don't know. I need a couple of askings because my back, it was my back was the like lower back. Yeah, my back was tripping. Right. So, babe, mm-hmm. give me a couple of aspirins because this kept going every day. And then I was walking in the hallway one time, and I had to stop and like catch my breath. Mm. So she looked at me and she said, "You're going to the doctor. Ah, just give me a couple. I'm gonna be all right. It's just." So finally, I said, "Okay, I'm gonna go to the doctor." When I went to that doctor and they took my blood pressure, uh, mm-hmm. oh lord, my blood pressure was 234 mm. over 120. Wow! For those of you who don't know, the textbooks 120 is, over 80. Oh my <laughs> god! Well, that is stroke. So I was telling that my my blood pressure's never been high. I've never had high blood pressure. My wife said, you got it now. Well, you get so used to what it feels like to have high blood pressure that you probably didn't even realize. Well, I I, mean, I I wasn't even tripping off that, but I was. the thing I was tripping off the most is why was I having to stop and catch my breath? Out of curiosity, mm. before that, when was the last time your blood pressure was ever even checked? I don't, can you remember? Okay, so that's fine. Oh, it's been a while. It was a while before yeah. that, right? Yeah, so yeah you should have Walking known. around, you didn't even know. I was a ticking time bomb. Oh, wow. Good Lord. I was, 234 over 120. What did he tell you? So we took it again. I said, <laughs> I said you got to take my Let's check this manual. Yeah, yeah, that that right. here. Yeah. It's going to look right. No, this, same thing. 234 over 120. Well, well, I mean, what did he say? He said, you need to, he said, you need to go to the hospital. That's yeah, what let's call him. an ambulance. No, no. I, I don't need no ambulance. You need to go to the hospital. Something's right. not going. So, man, the, the, the journey from that point was unbelievable. I mean... You know, having biopsies done on my kidneys. So I'm mm. assuming you went uh, to the hospital, they did blood work, and then they saw that uh, not only is your blood pressure high, but you also, like your kidney function looks a little off. Was that, was, that, was, that, was that how it got identified? That's it. It's, your, your blood, your sugar levels are out of control. Your, were you diabetic then? Diabetic. Your sugar levels are out of control. But you, you didn't know? know. You didn't know you were diabetic. No, I knew oh, I was you diabetic. Knew you were diabetic. Yeah, okay. of course I knew. I've been diabetic just for a wasn't long time. Okay. Managed. But I told my wife this. You you don't know how important it is to gauge those things. Mm. Blood pressure, sugar levels. Right. You don't know how important that is. And back then, we're bulletproof. I'm an athlete. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah Nothing's like, going to happen fine. to me. Ah, please. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Ah, doc. Ah. But when you got diagnosed with diabetes, didn't the doctor tell you what the risks are if you if if you have diabetes and, and what the long-term they effects told are? Me, but again. Did they give you okay. a pamphlet? It just went in one ear out the other. Like, yes, that can happen to me. Take metformin. Wow. Take metformin. Take your metformin. Take your metformin. And everything will metformin. be okay. Yeah. Mm. But that wasn't the truth. And I think the metformin was not good for me because I was one of those patients that was going to have issues for your kidneys later on. Else, yeah. I think the metformin did me. Uh, you know, I did think you it dirty. Was, yeah, I think it was bad. <laughs> I think they should have put me on insulin instead uh-huh. of the pill, which I'm on now. Yeah. Right? Mm. It's more controllable. Right. Mm. And I, I mean, I go to the blood. So God is good. I go to the doctor now. Everybody says your blood work is just excellent. Now yeah. it's like a competition. But for now, you. yeah, because I'm, I'm checking my. Shit. I got it on my phone. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Now, now technology. Yeah, helps technology's a bad dude. You push a button, one fifteen. How that's you doing? Good. good for you. I and mean, that's nice too because you can track all oh, of the best but, ones. And that's what they do when I go to the doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, two two months or three months, they do something with my phone and they check. My sugar levels from the, all that time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So rewinding a little bit, I want to go back to when you're in the hospital first being diagnosed. Mm-hmm. So your blood work was off, and then it said, listen, you're, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on here. So yeah. your kidney function doesn't look good. Uh, did Were you in the hospital at that time, and they end up saying, look, we got to do a biopsy, see what's going on? Okay. Or did they first, send you home, try to fix you? They, they sent me home, mm. and they sent me back to – I was going to this doctor. He was checking my – my functions every mm-hmm. every week I was going to him and Being it, kept, if it comes down. It kept getting worse. It kept getting mm-hmm. worse. So finally they sent me over to St. Joe's to do a a biopsy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And once I did that biopsy, they knew that, you know, my kidneys were gonna fail and And then they said mm-hmm. we gotta talk Both about dialysis. Yeah, everything. Mm-hmm. Everything, every everything. So check this out. Okay. The week before I had open heart surgery. I start dialysis. See, I'm confused at the timeline too, because I'm like, you have an open heart surgery. It's, it's correct. No, a kidney no. transplant. Or open heart surgery. Okay, let me let me get open heart surgery was in 18. Mm-hmm. Transplant was in 20, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So 
Open heart surgery in 18, right? You started dialysis in 18. I started dialysis in 18, mm. a week before I had open heart surgery. I had open heart surgery down at uh, Cleveland Clinic in Weston. Mm -hmm. My boy, Sheffield. Great place, Sheffield, Dr. Sheffield. <laughs> and uh, he got me right. And uh, How was that? How was the open heart surgery? I mean, everyone dude, says, uh, obviously, yeah. I think a lot you of people go going. through it, right? A lot of people end up that, especially that we see. But I mean, I know personally, younger people are having open heart surgery in their 30s and, and 40s and 50s, of course. But... It's a tough, tough surgery. Look here. Let me tell you something. I didn't wake up for two days. That must have been a game changer for your entire life. Now, check this out. I don't, I don't know if people realize that they take your heart and put it over there yeah. and, and body. have it on a machine <laughs> while they get the arteries together, right? Mm -hmm. it, yeah. So I'm saying I'm really not here anymore. My heart is over there. Yeah. This is just a shell, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then they put it all back together. But it's like you probably never thought of yourself as a shell before that. No, I didn't. And I, I that kind of tripped me out for a long mm -hmm. time because I was like, Jesus, did, do you? So my wife has pictures of me after surgery that she has never shown me. Wow, it's, they it's, must have been bad. It's kind of tra it's just traumatic to it's see someone traumatic. like that. How was your mindset? Were you? Were, I mean, did you go through any depression at no, that time? I told, like this is not me. This one I didn't. I just told my wife it's game time. I'm 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 ready. Let's get it. The kidney was different. I went through some shit. Yeah. Which kidney. would be surprising because a lot of people would be like, oh, heart more, more no, serious than you, a kidney. kidney no, well, I don't know because that I'm kidney say is pretty important. Serious. Yeah, that's some serious stuff. I mean, it was like, I don't know. I, I You know, what I went through was, is weird, like a PTSD type situation. Of where course, I, yeah. I, and, you know, I was scared to go to sleep. Uh not waking up. I, yeah, I was mm -hmm. having them. And now you have a family that are, you have young. What? You know, you, know, you, you have all your children. It was children just a lot. And, it was just a lot. And even your family being there for you, it adds more stress. And when, it, when Inadvertently. It, when it got dark, man, I would be up just walking around. I mean, yeah. I'd walk around to 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And like, then I, I, I was so tired, but I, I ain't going to sleep because I don't know if and I'm going to wake up. And this was after the kidney after transplant. After my kidney. The, the, the heart transplant, everybody was there. I was in the hospital until... They took the tubes. I mean, mm -hmm. I had. I mean, I. Well, you had open heart surgery. Yeah, cavity. You had you had it where they did the, the 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 bypass surgery yes. for your vessels. Yes. So that. So then you recovered from that, and mm -hmm. then you you're on dialysis, for right? That, from eighteen to twenty. And when did they tell you that? Listen, your kidney function is never going to improve. We need to start talking about a well, transplant. They said that from the beginning. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I wasn't no like well, we're going right. to hope it comes back. No, no, no. They knew. Not, yeah. It was time. And, you know, there was a couple chances before that I might have got one earlier. But, you know, people are a little weird about that. I mean, it's a different. Mm -hmm. It's different. And I I, 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 I really didn't want to. I had to get it from the right person because right. I wasn't going to take it from my wife. She got my kids. You know, no, no. She's got to oh, be. You're, you're talking about getting the kidney. Yes. Your donor, yeah. She, yeah, she's got to be here. So that's out. Right. Mm -hmm. you were know? you guys a match? To... Yeah. You guys were a match. Yeah. You wow. didn't want to risk it, though. My sister was a match. She was a cancer survivor, though. Uh -huh. So they were kind of. Uh, right. Yeah. So, you know, my ex-wife, we were matched. Wow. I don't know how I had all these women matching yeah, me. Yeah, right? You picked good. <laughs> so then my brother-in-law all of a sudden said, man, I'm it. So wow. We matched up. And uh, it was my brother-in-law who gave me a kidney. That's wow. Cool. So what was cool, they gave me a. The uh, Legacy Award in Detroit in June, mm -hmm. and I took him with me, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I, I kind of gave him the story about what was going on. Because right now, you never know that I, I went through all that no, shit. Not at all. Not at all. No. no, right? No. So I was like, man, you know, you, life is so fragile, man. Right. It is mm -hmm. so fragile. And I tell people all the time, you just, listen, you got to stop being mad at somebody. You got to cut it out yeah. because that that really ain't going to matter when the lights are out. Mm -hmm. Right. You know. You're not talking to somebody, and you you mad at somebody, and next thing you know, that person's gone. You never get a chance to talk to that person again. You're going to be screwed up. Did that change? Your, I know, obviously, if you read about yourself, there's uh, stories about you and Prince mm -hmm. and, and having years of not talking. Mm -hmm. How did that affect your relationship? Well, it, it, it did there for a while, but, you know, again, my, my son's a little different. He's not all... He's a he's he's a difficult individual. Mm -hmm. Let's put it that way. <laughs> so you know, I, you know, you communicate, but you keep it 
keep it light because right. at, at the end of the day, man, you know, like I tell the young ones, I I done everything I can for you. Right. You know, when you were a little kid, you know, chubby running around here and they wasn't going to let you play at 306 pounds when you were 14. Yeah. Who'd you come to? <laughs> you came to me. Dad, I need to, to, I need a trainer. Can I? So at the end of the day, you got to respect that. If you can't respect that, then me and you are not going to get along. Right. We're, we're mm-hmm. not going to have a good we're, 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 Right. We're going to bump heads because my father, I'm going to show him the utmost respect no matter what. Mm-hmm. And back in them days, dads and moms, they held things in that you never knew about. Right. Mm-hmm. Right? They take it to the grave. They take it to the grave. I, I found out I had a brother when I was 40 years old. Wow. So what I'm saying is the respect that you have for your mother and father, that's priceless. Right. Mm-hmm. It don't change. Mm-hmm. And that's what these younger kids, my younger kids, he got to understand that I'm you're going to give me the respect. If you can't respect me, you stay on your side, and I'll stay on mine. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's just the way I, I was raised that way, and I ain't changing. So My, my kids, the, the older kids from my first wife, mm-hmm. those kids are different. These younger kids are incredible. Right. They're uh, men. Right. But they understand. They appreciate it's a, it. It's a mindset. It's like how people talk about millennials. It's like what we see every day. It's just the generation changes and the gaps that occur that everyone who's grown into or born into the society of that time of of the mindset that people kind of keep with them, right? Because I mean, nature, nurture. These are all your kids, but they, they were definitely brought up in just different times. Well, you know, those two yeah. kids, the oldest two kids were spoiled to death. They were spoiled. I mean, <laughs> right. come on. They grew up in your prime time. Oh, my God. Yeah. They were spoiled. Yeah. You know, these kids driving Mercedes to school. Yeah. <laughs> He's jumping in my Bentley like uh, yeah. it's his car. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm saying it's a different vibe. It is. They were spoiled, and I think that was my fault. You can't just spoil them like that. You got to make them earn something. You can't say, here you go, enjoy, Man. and not and that, teach the, teach the inner eggs, lesson And that life. was my fault because I gave them everything. I right. gave my two, the first two, they got everything. Well, because you want everything. to. You, you, you to want to give them a great life. You want to, but again, you think back, well, it, might, it's, it, was, it was a mistake. Well, mm. also, you, I mean, you probably weren't there for them as much, too. No, I wasn't. So There's it's an mother. easy substitute to say, here you go. Like, well, you know, I'm not mother, there for you because mother, I'm traveling or I'm yeah. playing this game or I'm doing this No, or but that, he was you know? with me all the time. Oh, he came with See, you? That's, oh. the, that's yeah. the difference. Okay. This dude smelled the dirt from day one. <laughs> so, and, and again, yeah. he became what? Yeah, look who he is. That's right. Yeah. Apple doesn't He got $214 million. Dollars. How'd yeah. you get that? Yeah. How? Um, did you do it on your, or right. you did it by yourself? Right. That's mm-hmm. another thing. You can't do anything by yourself. You need help. Right. Right. So again, you so know. So when you got your kidney transplant, you clearly couldn't do that by yourself. You no, brother in law. Heck no, you needed help. What did you think when your it was your brother in law, right? Yeah, my brother in law. Did you ever feel like guilty? No, you know what I felt? I felt very humble. Humble, like just gracious. Very, I, and I'm still to this day very humble. I mean, I mean, you that must at, be an unusual bond to feel know. that, you know. And this dude, is you like, can't explain it, right? Nah, this dude is like, I mean, like. I mean, we're brothers. I mean, we're we're connected yeah. forever. You are. We're connected forever. Physically. And, uh, yeah. I took him with me. Like I said, I took him with me to the. I mean, it was it was kind of emotional thing. I I really. I mean, now is here lately. It's the first time that I really haven't been as emotional as I was. I was. Mm-hmm. I mean, I couldn't hold it. Anytime I talk about it, I'd fucking break down. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. Because, it's a huge thing. <laughs> no, it's a huge thing. Yeah. But for somebody to give up part of themselves. Mm-hmm. That's priceless. I mean, you, you know. Yeah, it's I got, not words. I it's got not... people that are way closer to me than him. That no, they weren't gonna do it. You know, they wouldn't do it. Mm. And this guy is a pastor. Oh. He said he prayed on it, and he said he was gonna be the one. And that's how it went down. Did it make you more spiritual? It. I don't think it made me more spiritual. I just think it just made me more worldly. Like, dude. It opened your mind up. Yeah, you know, a lot of things really don't matter. I mean, you know, that's just my my mindset now is like, oh, I have great days every day. It's unbelievable mm-hmm. because I'm not into the BS. Mm. Yeah. I'm not. I'm just, I'm, I told my wife, somebody wants to argue, it ain't with me. I ain't doing it because I understand now that it means nothing. What? Not worth it. No, it's not worth it because, tell you, I almost lost my life a couple times. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> huh? 
I remember how hard Ooh. it was to get you that transplant just because of your recent heart surgery and just your got a lot your of vascular factors. System, My vascular right? system was horrible. Yeah, it was very. I was getting clotted. I was clotting like crazy, and you know, again, Hamden's did a great job. He was probably one of the only guys that was going to work on me back then because mm-hmm. nobody wanted to deal with. Really, I might have been an amputee if I wouldn't have found Hamden. Right. What? See, oh. I'm, I don't know about all this. So he had, just, oh. just from the general scope, which obviously you have permission here, yes, to course. talk about his medical health because this benefits uh, what we're looking for for everyone. But you had a you had a heavy calcification along your vessels down your down your leg. Mm-hmm. So when they did the kidney, or the, the point was when a kidney transplant is, is, is to be done, then when they open you up, they need to have important blood flow in order to keep yep. that kidney that they're going to put in so it does not go bad. Yes, sir. There was concern because the, the blood flow was not good for him. Mm-hmm. So if they were to put in that good kidney, Take then away it, would not, it would probably not receive it well because mm-hmm. of your blood flow and, and your And that collaterals. kidney needed so much blood. Correct. So my flow was – so let me tell you, this is the part that is so unbelievable. So Dr. Hamlin says, man – I'm going to show you something. So he pulls up the computer, and he's showing me he, he's showing me my arteries in my legs, right? So he pulls it up, and he, and he kind of does this. And I said, I don't see anything. He says, yeah, that's right. Everything is clogged. Were you even, like, feeling effects on your legs? No, I got the neuropathy in my feet. Uh, I, I, that diabetic. part I was feeling, right? But I wasn't feeling like. And that can kind of mask some feelings yeah, so, too. So 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 then he says, "Look, tomorrow in the sh- 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 I'm in the hospital. They got, now they got me on the table and they 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 got kind of got me on the table and they got this plastic thing that goes over me, right? Mm-hmm. And is it the sterile drape? Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're doing an interventional. Yes. They're doing an interventional to try to unblock you. Yes. Them. So mm-hmm. he's well, got to go. you're awake. You're awake yeah, for that. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I you're, you're, in, you're in La La Land. Yeah, but I'm not, I don't want to be awake. Yeah, okay. I don't all right, be, all right. <laughs> so he's going to go through my groin, mm-hmm. down yeah. my leg, and he's going to open up those arteries. I said, this man's crazy. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> what is he doing? So I'm, I'm man. This man's I'm crazy. I'm out, and I'm, I'm, I'm up, but I'm out. Mm-hmm. And he Which goes. Is worse, he almost. goes in there and does his thing, right? Yeah. Surgery's over, and they they hey says where he go. He brings that same computer over to me, and he he says, "See that? I see my blood running through that dang artery." So they almost amputated your legs. I was that close. Yeah, he was that oh close. Oh my god. Oh yeah. I, I, not I'm only not talking about one, but not even get that kidney. Both. Both. I had I got worked on both legs. Thank God your wife was like, go to the doctor. Man, that was some that was some crazy time. It like all goes back to that though. If you never went to the doctor, you'd have but never known. Again, the emotions mm-hmm. is it, man, you don't understand. You know, trying to stay strong for your kids because you know my kids are looking at me like, dude, you know. And you're probably wow. scared. Scared. Well, I couldn't be. I had to. I had to man up. Which I was even to, worse. You couldn't I even be to, scared. You know, hey, oh, daddy's all right. I'm. You know, I'm 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 hurting. I mean, mm-hmm. I, this man you internalized just, everything. You didn't yeah, want to scare this, them. Yeah, no, I didn't want to scare. Them. Yeah. This man just went inside my leg, man. With this, yeah, he's a roto rooter inside yeah. my damn leg. Also, what it is? Pretty much, right? Yeah, roto rooter. Nobody else would do that. And you probably didn't know. I mean, I don't know, but you didn't know no, much no, 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 about no, no. these I, procedures. The thing about Hamden is, is that I trusted him. Mm-hmm. You know, I trust all my doctors. This yeah. guy right here, Hamden, <laughs> Bowers. Yeah, who did? You know what's funny is that, it, and, and I heard you know this you know being said just while we're, I was getting to know your medical situation that time mm-hmm. is that, listen, the last thing I want is Cecil Fielder dying on my table, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So so it's to pressure. some extent, it's like it's you know a, you don't want anyone dying on your table, right. but you know when you bring in someone an icon like you, it's not that you know everyone is is when, as a physician and you, you treat everyone the same, but mm-hmm. at the same time it's. You don't want to be that person that led to your legs to be amputated or you not getting your kidney transplant yeah, I mean, or anything. Yeah, you treat everyone it's the a... same, but the pressure is definitely higher. Well, I tell you what, I'm blessed because I had some great doctors. I mean, there's no, this there was nobody else in the country that would do what Hamden did. They wouldn't do it. You think they were just scared of the outcome? I don't know what it was, but 
it was it was they, they, the one you were I kept extremely hearing extremely high risk. Vi- okay, I understand. I was yeah. high. I understand <laughs> that complications. You were like, come which, on, which, which probably got identified for you having difficulty having someone to do that procedure. Well, you know what thing though that was really a trip too. Now you know, since you don't have kidney function, mm-hmm. there's nothing to clean your blood out. Mm-hmm. So when I have surgery and they're shooting a dye in me, to to, yeah. to so they can making your kidney function worse. Nothing's filtering well, that out. Yeah, because yeah, of dialysis. My potassium level goes up to 7.8. Oh, my God. Now, I'm going to pass. You're going to die. Yeah, I'm, I'm about like, to ready. I'm right ready to go. So, Hamden mm-hmm. calls the hospital. Yeah, dialysis. They, they didn't clean me out after surgery, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm, 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 on the, I'm, I'm over there. Excuse me. I'm throwing. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm just in a. I'm, I don't know where I am, right? Hamden calls the hospital, tells them to give me something. To bring my potassium level back down. Because if they wouldn't have, it would have been a major problem. Arrhythmia and then yeah, heart attack. I, yeah, I don't I have mean, a heart attack. Yeah. Potassium in general, it's what you use to kill people. Yeah, I mean, that high level <laughs> Like is giving very... potassium kills people. I told I told the, 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 my boy at the dialysis that, you know, I had a complication with my potassium. He said, what was that? I said seven point eight. Oh, I've seen people over eight. What? Yeah, no, that's oh, not yeah. normal. Oh, yeah. That's well, not normal. It's not normal, but people with kidney failure—it's—it's it's not terribly Expected. too uncommon to see that. <laughs> but I've, but seen, I mean, 10, 12, what I've point... seen it where the lab can't even read it at that point. At mm. that point, you're you're there's a lot of medicines out there that you do to rapidly, which dialysis is Decreasing. really the fastest right. way to do it, right? right. So right. you just dialyze someone. Plus, give some medications to help bring it down as quickly as possible. I mean, as I a could, nurse, I, so. this, if I got that, I would I call the stat team. I couldn't, I couldn't sit up in the bed. Yeah. That's how jacked up I was. Yeah. Now, that's pretty bad. And then they probably A big-ass called... person like me, I can't get up. I, yeah. I, I have no chance to get I can't mm-hmm. pull the strength to get my big butt up and sit up. Oh, after, like, all your surgeries, like, did you have to do a lot of, like, physical therapy? No. Or, or were you good? You're just walking around day I two, day I came right one. out of it. Matter Incredible. Of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, when they sent me home after kidney surgery, me and my brother were walking the neighborhood. We were walking the cul-de-sac. I rem- yeah. You, you think you, you took f- better care of yourself after all of it? Oh, no question. <laughs> I, Might have been I, a, but you know, you know what question. it is? I don't even know if it's take care of myself better, but I pay attention. You're more aware. Yeah, I pay attention to my body. Mm-hmm. Right. I tell my wife, I, she, you know, she always says, you got to talk. You got to say something because she's always on me. How you feel? What? I'm like, girl, if <laughs> you, you okay don't, today? If you don't get away from me. <laughs> I'm like, I've never really had a person that really cared for me like this woman. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Is she Amazing. a nurse? <laughs> she is my nurse. Oh, but is she a nurse? She's no, just your she's nurse. she's corporate lady. She's, oh. she, but she is my, I mean, this one, this is my, I'm going to tell you, this is my guardian angel right mm. here. Yeah. This is my, this is my, this is my soulmate. She's the best in the world. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, clearly she made the difference in your Man. ultimate care. What? Like, like why you're here. Yeah. The, she, she is the reason why I'm still him. And a couple other doctors <laughs> and her. You're his uh, guardian angel. Oh as well. yeah, I got some. Oh, I got a few of them. You know, Doctor Bowers was. I I was his last surgery. What? He retired. Yeah, he retired. He was like, I've done the best. He did me. Now he, I'm done. He did me, and he 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 laid it down. That was it. Wow. And that man, I still haven't seen him. I can't wait to see him. Now he's a hall of famer. He no, he's in my hall. <laughs> yeah. He's in my hall. He's the best. My, I mean that TGH. I'm, I'm gonna give him a plug. I'm gonna tell y'all right now that <laughs> TGH was some, that, them folks are something else over there. They were getting it done because I was about out of here. No, and, it and was, look uh, at me, yeah, and was... look at me. You would never I know, know it. It's You're unbelievable. Like the most energetic person. It's unbelievable. I don't know how I made it. So now <laughs> we look at your life. You, you had heart surgery. You've been through dialysis. You had your kidney transplant. And and now you're on all those types of medications that require you to maintain that kidney yes, sir. forever. Yes, sir. How did that change your life? Just understanding that concept and not at all. Same thing. Game so time. So much better man. than doing dialysis three times a oh, week, right? What you talking about? Yeah. But it's game time. I know what I gotta yeah. do. It's just it's just really It's like second nature. I'll tell you, when my best friend came to my house, I'm gonna tell you this right now. Because this is really crucial. Me and this guy. His name is Clinton Harris. We've been together since we were young kids in mm-hmm. school. And uh, I, I think, matter of fact, I know it was. Hamden had just went in my leg again to to clear it out, right? Mm-hmm. And I was sitting there in the, in, the, in the reclining chair, and he he flew in to see me because 
Dia told him, you know, he's in the hospital again. So he flew in to see me, and he sat next to me in the chair next to me, and he looked at my foot, and he started crying. This might not. When he started crying, he done messed me up now. Like, What's wrong? What the hell are you looking at? And my foot, he said, was so black. Uh-huh. And then two days later, man, it just brightened back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Pinked back up. You got so, the blood flow back. I can't believe it was that close, was man. Oh, was and this black. was all around the time oh of COVID, God. too. Yeah, I, I remember. I mean, yeah, oh, my God. Know. I didn't even think about that. 2020. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we were in the hospital, masked up, everything. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. And that changed, obviously. Oh, your, like the pace of it, too. Yeah, your probably. ability to do things. No, in I life couldn't do it. You couldn't do anything. Even after the surgery, I was, I, I was scared. You were confined to home. Yeah, they, I was yeah. scared. They told me, you know, you can't get it. Mm-hmm. And I end up getting it. Oh my god! But I was fine. Yeah, because okay. I had so you much had like medication. Lower, yeah. yeah, I didn't get it until after I was medicated because mm-hmm. I didn't go anywhere. I stayed mm-hmm. at home every day. And then once we, I I think I was three shots in, four shots in, the COVID shots. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, I had the antibodies and I had the Evo Shield, so I you had everything. Taking I had everything. any chances. So I go to New York, masked up now. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first time you went yeah, to New York. Yeah, and that's when Dia got it. Dia yeah. got it first. My huh. wife got it. I got it. And then the baby got it. So I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, my God. No, I'm I'm really Never nervous. leaving my house. <laughs> I, I'm not letting COVID t- defeat nah, me nah, after COVID everything I've been me. through. Hell, no, they had no chance. Ugh. COVID had no chance. I kicked his ass. You were already ready. Mm-mm. Do you <laughs> talk to... Uh, People who've been in your position, uh, whether they've had a kidney transplant and, or have you had the ability to, you know, almost um, kind of be that that spokesperson for people who have gone through what you've gone through, or have you thought about, it? especially the younger generation? And I mean, you've seen obviously people who have taken care of their bodies and who have not taken care of their bodies right. into where you are in your life right. presently. Has that changed you to say I got to go out there and kind of get the word out and? Well, I'm gonna do that. I'm, you know, uh, Tampa General is is gonna work it out. I think my community, my my African American community is is like I was. We're scared of the doctor. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I really think so, and I think that has a lot to do with uh, you know the Tuskegee Project back in the day. Mm-hmm. You know when they were injecting For syphilis. Yeah, I mean. Mm-hmm. That has a lot to do with because I, you know, you think about that, man. That's that's really crazy. But I think that, that is crazy. No, I, I've learned all about that, no, and I just remember crazy. it at no, all. That's very crazy. Mm-hmm. But now, since I've gone through it, and if they would use me as a uh, person to be able to go into these communities around, not only just you know the Tampa area, but all around Florida, who whoever wants to come to TGH and get you know get some uh, oh. get some knowledge and get help on mm-hmm. how to how to how to combat the, uh, the situation that I was in, I mean, I I think I can be that soldier because, I mean, it's not just the kidney transplant, it's the heart surgery, it's the dialysis, it's everything that I went through that is a a great story. And then you know, folks said, "Well, you need to write a book." No, no, I don't need to write a book. <laughs> that book is gonna stay right here with me because at the end of the day, it's like I really love the journey, man. I'm, I, mm-hmm. I it's kind of crazy for me to say that, but. You know, from being this great athlete to having this very long right. career, to be bulletproof, then to figure out that you're not bulletproof, mm-hmm. yeah. and to figure out you got to go through this journey of trying to get back to being healthy again. I mean, I tell you, I kind of, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to do it again, <laughs> right? But I kind of, it pro- it gave me something else to work out. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was almost Give me like chills a, a little bit. It's almost like a, yeah. it was like another, you know, okay, I'm going to beat this. I'm going to, I got to get it together. I used to tell my wife all the time, it's game time. When I had to go to surgery or whatever, hey, I'm ready. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. Because I hated the doctor. I hated getting shots. Mm. I get my shot needles. every day. Yeah. I have to tell you, your mindset for sure. Uh you gotta Made have you it, get man. Through. I mean, there's oh, there's no. I don't. I think I your body physically it. wouldn't have done it. No, if, I couldn't have. If I if that if I didn't have that focus to really yeah to like hone in on what I really had to do. I mean, again, it's from that heart surgery was scary moment, right? Yeah. No, no, no. We're gonna get this done. Now <laughs> we the get dialysis this done. part every day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, four and a half hours. Three days a week. You're tired after the job is done. Yeah, you're you're a different awful. person. I never missed a day. Yeah. 
So going out, obviously a lot of this would be towards preventive medicine, right? Mm -hmm. We call it preventive medicine, like making changes in your in your diet, making changes in what we ingest. I mean, you know, even I'm thinking, and we were talking before you you came uh, and, and when we knew you were coming onto this podcast was, I mean, even when you're in college or, or high school or, you know, people binge drink, right? And, mm -hmm. and you, we're ingesting all this stuff that we're young. We don't really think that it's going to do any long-term effects, right? Mm -hmm. And the way I look at it, I'm just trying to find a correlate how we do things. You obviously had your way and probably Katie and I share a more common way because we, you know, we came from two big party universities and, mm -hmm. you know, everyone is doing and you're having fun because you think you're invincible, right? So when you look at that and you look at, you know, your children and you look at what society has and what's out there, I would I would say that like listening to someone like you who has been through what you have been through, like just us sitting here, I think that's impacting. Like, I feel like I want to go to the doctors myself and get some blood work done this to. week. You, you know? need As to. Do. Jesus. He don't go to the how are you How are you a, a doctor? <laughs> and don't go to the doctor. And don't go to the doctor. Well, I'm a mean. nurse and I don't go to yeah, the doctor you either. Know. See, that's crazy. It is. But you know, I think it's 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 crazy though. You know, I drunk I drunk when I played. I was a drinker. Yeah. I you know after then you know that's I I I learned from the old school dudes. Right. You play hard. Party hard. You play hard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. On and off the field, it's the mm -hmm. same thing. So we drunk. You know, I've had a drink for five years. Yeah. Wow. I dip tobacco every day. Right. right. Well. That's your vice. For thirty years, I haven't had a dip in five years. Wow. wow. Since I had my heart surgery, I haven't had a drink. I haven't had a... It's game time. Did you ever smoke? Never smoked. Never smoked. Cigars, feel though. I cigars. love cigars. I used yeah. to smoke cigars all the time. But I... It's game time, man. You, you, your mind... There's no addiction, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. Right. It's all mental. Mm -hmm. You got to get with it. You got to figure it out. Mm -hmm. I, I, di I love dipping. I love Copenhagen. Oh, <laughs> my God. Did I love <laughs> Every baseball With my player. coffee. Yeah. After... Breakfast, after lunch, after dinner, sometime go to sleep with it. Oh my God. Yeah, it was crazy. I Every did baseball for, player. Yeah, I did it for 30 years. So when I had to stop, my wife, here she comes again. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the hospital, man. Yeah. I've been, no, I've been rested, for, about to have surgery. And uh, I get I get to the hospital early because, well, my mom, my sister, and my stepfather, everybody was at my house, but they, they drove down. After, because I, I went in the day before. Yeah. Because I had to, you know, get prepped get and all prepped. that. So they can't. So in my little bag, I snuck in a can of Copenhagen. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. In the hospital. My wife. Got in trouble. Oh, my. She looked at me and she said, let me tell you one thing right now. If you, after this dip you take, mm -hmm. grab another one of them cans of Copenhagen, I'm leaving. <laughs> my God. I said, huh? Huh? <laughs> He said, you heard what I said. You do that again, I'm leaving. So then that night. Oh, that must have been your last yeah, favorite dip yeah, ever. Man. <laughs> you savored it. Man. You remember it like it was yesterday. Christian, I was, yeah. I was like, <laughs> she didn't mean that. She didn't. <laughs> I'm talking to myself now. I'm in my yeah. room all by myself because nobody's in there with me. She didn't mean that. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not stopping doing it. But, you know, after I thought about it, I just said, that's it. I'm not doing it again. Mm -hmm. I stopped cold turkey that day. I wow. honestly think that you would be an amazing spokesperson. Oh, I'm for I'm everyone be. in your community. They yeah. really need to hear it because this story is crazy. I yeah, mean, this is this needs to get out. It Man. would just help people. Don't wait until it happens. You can't. You, you can't. gotta be proactive and yeah, just do. aware of just your body and, and your health because just if go not, to the doctor. Mm -hmm. The doctor's going to tell you everything you need to know. Mm -hmm. He's going to tell you. You take that blood work. They can, they can tell you everything. Right. They can tell you rooter to the tutor. If something's wrong <laughs> with you, they can tell you. And I, and I think, you know, that that is one thing. Even me, I, I was bulletproof. I didn't need no doctor because mm -hmm. I was all right. I was, and, you know, even when my blood pressure was 234 over 120, I'm telling the doctor, that's you. not right. Yeah. Uh, in denial. I was in denial, yeah. right? Well, I'm in denial, and I can't walk from here to across the street without stopping and trying to catch my breath. There's something wrong, mm -hmm. right? I'm like, man, you that's a knucklehead. Yeah. I just feel I, like I could have died walking the street. Wow. 234 over 120. Yeah. That's a ticking time. And how long, no one knows how long you were walking around with that number. Well, you know, you know. 
I was walking around with that number when I found out probably for another two, three weeks. Mm. Wow. That's I mean, just luck. It, I mean, no. <laughs> wow. No, that's it's luck. That, that really is, right? Yeah, I mean, you really should not be here sitting with us. I yeah. mean, after everything you've been through. Come on, man. It doesn't happen like this to people, right? Like, I mean, it does, but every How did I not have events, a heart attack? It's yeah. crazy. Or okay. stroke. Okay, let me tell you what happened. And this is when, okay, Ramon Ruiz. Mm -hmm. Ruiz Ramon is my, mm -hmm. my doc, right? Mm -hmm. So he put me on the water pills to kind of, you know, get, keep yeah, the water get the off me, right? Off of yeah. You. Dude, I'm in the house over on the beach, right? I could I walked from upstairs downstairs and I was out of breath. Yeah. I it's crazy too just listening to you. You're like understanding now your own health. You're Dude. understanding the process. You're mm -hmm. you're just in the know now. You, oh, you I, probably I, feel I, way I feel, better. No, I feel great. I feel great now, but I'm just yeah. saying you talking about was almost out of here. How did I not have a stroke? How did I mm -hmm. not have a heart attack? I mean I I was I was jacked. I was jacked. Right. I mean, from the kidneys, from the from the diabetes, from high blood pressure. I mean, I had all. I had everything. I had all yeah. the symptoms. She's well, out of here, you, right? Mm -hmm. It takes. It doesn't happen overnight. This takes years of damage. Exactly. That happens, right? and that's what I'm trying. That's to what tell people don't realize. Yes. It, takes, it takes a long time for it this wasn't stuff to show. Right. It wasn't that day I found out right. my blood pressure was high. It wasn't right. that day. It was like ten years down the road that yeah. you know just being. You know, bulletproof. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's just to see what you have been through from the beginning stages and enjoying life and having some vices as everyone else does and 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 having the the lifestyle of just um having access to whatever you want really, right? Yeah, I mean I could do I mean, anything I want. A, but at the end of yeah. the day, that wasn't gonna matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I wasn't gonna be here. Yeah. And now life is so much better. I mean, I have a great day every day. Yeah. I, I, I've never said that before. That's amazing. <laughs> I have a great day every day. You know what I do every day? I'm going to tell you what I do. I want to hear it. <laughs> I wake up about 4.30. Ooh. I sit there with my little dog, which I never thought I'd have a dog. I got a little old dog. I don't even know what you call it. But anyway. It's a, it's a golden doodle. Yeah, one of those. <gasps> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and me and him sit there and look at each other for about an hour and a half, six o'clock come. <laughs> I'll get up and start preparing the little midgets uh, lunch for school. I'll make breakfast. Uh huh. And the dog will be running around together all day until about one fifty five and I'll pick the midget up. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a great day. Wow. That's, That's amazing. I would have never looked at you and been like, Yep, he's got a golden doodle. Yeah, I got one. Like, <laughs> oh, adorable. This like dude, we've got some. Yeah. But... This dude is this guy here, man. He's... They're little humans in a little No, there fur. he is. Yeah. This dude knows what chicken is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he knows. They know. Yeah. If I say chicken, he'll turn his head like what? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> I swear those dogs, they're a little, like, they're no, humans with a fur coat on. this dude is very smart. He's very mm -hmm. smart. Very smart. Have you, um, have you used all of this and sat down with your, your sons and your, your, your family and, and talked this out? Do, do, I mean, I know they know what you have been through, but do they know, know, like, how we're sitting down and kind of breaking it down? And, and um, obviously, they've been in their world. They've been in your world, right? right. A, a, a pro world. and. Yeah. You now have a future son also who just got committed to FSU, right? right and right. he's going to make it. They know. They know what dad went through. They they, they really know. I mean. Because they were. The the youngest, there. he is like, I tried to keep him as far away as I possibly could because I didn't yeah. want him to freak out. How but, old was he? Uh, when I first started this, he was a year old when I first oh, started Oh, baby. This. Yeah, he's, he's going to be seven. seven. Yeah. He's going to be seven. So, the the. My 15 year old and my 17 year old, they know. They know that it, it was a journey. It was. It was. It was for real. Have they changed their oh, perception he, and their lifestyle? This guy's a workaholic, and she is too. This guy is mm. in the gym. He's a gym rat. He mm -hmm. eats right. He. I mean, he's an athlete. Yeah. He. He's. He's the real deal. He's doing it right. Yeah. He's doing it right. He. He's got a better start at it as I. I mean, he. He. Man. So and then my daughter, she's a runner, so she runs all the time. I mean, they. They're doing it right. But I think it was a wake up call. Yeah. You know, it's a wake up call to anybody that's been around it. Yeah. Because, you know, life is it's a it's a fragile situation. And man. it's short. It is. Life is short. And I got a lot of friends that ain't here. Yeah. I mean, and you know, over this COVID period, my father, I lost my father to COVID, you know, mm. couldn't go to the funeral, that kind of stuff. So yeah. it's just, terrible. 
Yeah, it's been just, it, you know, this COVID situation for everybody has just been fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, and for you to go through all of the things mm -hmm. you just listed and just add, During that time, add a pandemic gosh. to it. Yeah. It's, 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 it's like you've really conquered it all. Yeah, the old man, you know, was 86 years old. I mean, he still had time. He was yeah. really doing good. And, yeah. you know, COVID was a beast. Yeah. Before we had medication to fix it, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we deep. saw people dying every day. Man, in what I seen in India though, that was the worst thing I've ever seen yeah. in my life. There was there was thousands and thousands dying. More TPs and burnings. Mm -hmm. Ah, that it's, was it was horrible. You never know what something can turn into until you really start seeing it, and they showed it. Then to it's us. only you know what you think it could be at that point because we don't have any background or experience with something like that. That was a that was a booger bear right there, buddy. <laughs> booger bear. Yeah. So question, what what are your from now on? What what is the uh, you know, I'm Seth. What are what are your goals that you want to accomplish in life from this point on that you want to be remembered for? Well, I don't know about remembered for, but I want to live. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and that takes that takes a lot of hard work. I mean, we talk about the medication I got to take. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, 30, 40 pills a day. I mean, you know, wow. I almost I almost look back at my boy Magic Johnson's situation, mm -hmm. you know. He had to grind. He had to grind. It's a grind, man. I think living is a grind, especially mm -hmm. when you have a health issue. Right. You got to grind. You can't give up. You got. He looks great. I mean. And he, he was diagnosed in the prime when yes, no one sir. really. But there was I fear he, about, he, about that. He, he went out of here. He went out of the country to go get his help. Yeah, and I think he got some good help because magic ain't no way everybody else is dying but magic. Yeah, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. And and then uh, you know I know um, you were friends with Kobe as well. Yeah, and you know you look at life and you see that Man. every That's day tragic. it's just us getting in a car or, or what we do. And I mean he was there with his daughter, with his thirteen daughter. year old daughter. Unbelievable. You know? mm -hmm. I mean you look at that and it's like it keeps adding as to why you want to live every day. I yeah. look at that. Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean. You know, I live with the fact that anything can happen to any one of us. Every yeah, day. I try to think of it like he, yeah, of course he was getting into a helicopter and with his daughter, but like you could be getting in the car with mm, your daughter easy. today, tomorrow. Should it's the I, same thing. You know, we get on planes all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and when it's supposed to happen, that's when it happens, right? right? Yeah. But again, I want to live. Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. that, and that's my, that's my, you know, I look around and see all these good things happening to these kids I got, man. Mm -hmm. I want to see it. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to see everything. I want to, you know, I never thought I'd be doing the the, the chop, man, but <laughs> you know, going since, on. Since, yeah, since we whooped the Atlanta Braves, we kind of made them stop the chop, <laughs> but I am going to be chopping my ass off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah hey, I'm, I'm not a, a, I'm not an old fan, but I'll be chopping oh, with you man, for him. We're going to chop. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're going to do what we have to do because at the end of the day, man, that's that's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, we do everything we possibly can to make sure that we have some successful children. That's yeah. it. And I'm doing on I'm not doing a bad job. I'm doing pretty good. And you you still travel around the country, give talks and everything. Yes, and I still move around and still do, what do I gotta, all that. Yeah, right? I got to man. I yeah. got. I got to. You know when, you know. It's it's a, it's a trip because, a lot of uh, athletes. You know we have a lot to give, and you know now with this different type of uh, analytics and things that are in the game that they're doing as far as. It's not what we were taught, mm -hmm. you know, but I think the game is starting to come back to the way we were taught. Mm -hmm. You know, anal analytics are good for certain things, right? Mm -hmm. But baseball is baseball. You got to see ball, hit ball, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So you got to see it, you got to catch it, you got to hit. Mm -hmm. And that's baseball. Yeah. That's you know, really it. That's it. And we, we, we as athletes that have done it, we just have to show the kids what they need to do to make themselves better, whether that is – you know, more T work, more soft toss, more ground balls, more fly ball, whatever it is. Work on your speed, work on your footwork. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do that you don't need somebody to do it with. You right. can do it by yourself. Go home, throw the ball up against the wall, catch it. Yeah, that's what I got my little dude doing right now, so he can learn how to catch the ball. Throw it up, yeah. against, take a tennis ball, throw it against the wall, catch it with your hands, no glove. I, I played uh, I played little league um, as a kid. It actually helped develop my tennis for reflexes. Believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I played tennis my my whole life, but mm -hmm. um, I was actually I played for the Yankees little league, and I was mm -hmm. a pitcher, and I was actually starting pitcher, and mm -hmm. we actually made it to the finals. How old were you? Um, I was probably twelve. Huh. Yeah, so I loved it. I'm not, and I get it, but you know that's the only experience I really have. But 
it was this isn't anything you do though. It you was, gotta, we yeah, gotta get how it. much time and effort because yeah. I was all about winning. Like yeah, I you gotta hated get it. losing. You I gotta hated get it. Whether it's an individual sport like tennis or it's a team effort, like you still you cannot stand losing. No, you gotta get it. Yeah. And you you know, you have to I'm gonna tell you, losing is humbling. Yeah. I, I, you have to be humble. The greatest of players have been humble. Yeah. Right? M- M- Michael Jordan, when he tried to play baseball, that was very humbling. Yeah. He was horrible. He went to the minors. Yeah, he was he horrible. Did not, yeah. No, he was horrible. I told yeah. him, Mike, you're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? He knew. He, knows. Yeah. he knew. Yeah. He was like, yeah, I'm bad. But again, yeah. the greatest of players get humble. Yeah. And you got you got the agony of defeat. You got to feel it. You got to yeah. taste it. You got to know that you don't want to feel like that. I mean, it's, man, wow. What a great thing athletics Sport is, man. Yeah. You got to understand what it feels like to get beat and hope you understand what it feels like to be the best in the world. Yeah. And everybody don't have that opportunity. And, and it's funny because I'm thinking about, like, when I applied to medical school and you see your friends getting in and you see, you know, who is not. And it just made me realize that, well, hey, that's humbling. They're getting in, and you're happy for them, but what is it going to take for me to have step up my go. game to make that happen, there right? There you go. And then it's, you know, I have a friend who's, you know, an actor in Hollywood, and we talk about all the time that uh, you see all these actors that were watching movies, and we're looking back at, like, 2010. Like, there were nobody then. Mm-hmm. Now look at them. They're, like, a big Hollywood star. Mm-hmm. And he's like, do you know how many defeats they had? To get to where they are now, I bet. and it, and it's just a parallel life of how you know we all get defeated. Everything, whether we we call it a defeat, you know, something else, or we ignore it as if it's not. But if you learn from that and you keep going at it, then you know you there's nothing going. that will stop you. You got to keep going, man. That's what I. That's my daily routine. You got to keep going. Yeah. No matter what, you got to get. Even with my young one, and you know he's doing his homework. I said, man, you got to get it done, man. I, you better hey, figure oh it my, out. Yeah. Yeah, I do. It it. Are you not relearning all the new math and teaching? No, this? I'm oh, not gosh, good at that, yeah. man. I'm, oh my god, Mama! Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a different world. These kids are growing wow. up in now. Wow, what you talking about? <laughs> yeah. Well, well I'm, I'm honestly just—I didn't even know it was going to turn and take this path today, and I'm inspired. It's pretty cool, right? You, <laughs> you never have. know who you're going to talk to. I know. I'm right? inspired. I really thought it was going to go away different route today wow, this is this was great you no know, this mm-hmm. is amazing and what i was you know going to say to we got to do something where we got to get you out there and what we're talking about just earlier and we got to get you where i mean you're a perfect role model mo- role model and a spokesperson for something like this no no i'm gonna do it tgh is gonna work it out because i i told I'll, you. I, we will definitely help yeah. you because we feel this is important very important man i mean i <sighs> woof like I said. I mean, if we could get you into every middle school, high school, college, <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever, you know, post-grad school. And, 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 but it's a life lesson that it's not that you're too young or too old to learn no, this. You, you got, know what I mean? You got it. You got it. And, you know, again, there's another guy out there like me who, who feels he's bulletproof, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the same principle goes yeah. with sports. It goes with your lifestyle. It exactly. goes with your health. It, exactly. it goes with everything. Exactly. Your I career, mean, whether it guy. be medicine there's or sports. There's another Cecil Fielder out there that thought he was bulletproof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And at some point in his life, he's going to go through adversity, right? Yeah. He's got to figure out how to get through it. Yeah, that's a... That's, uh... Well, that's been the most amazing uh, discussion for us to have and and bring out to light for everyone out there who, I mean, this is a strong message and this is a message of life, really. No doubt. I mean, you've been through what you have been through as just growing up in L.A., just, you know. Just that part. Your nephesis. Just that part. Yeah, I mean, (laughs) mean, just growing up in your community and, and, and what you've been exposed to, then making it to college and then making it to the pro league. They're making it to not just the pro league, but being a Hall of Famer. You know, you know that not that's going to be. I, I you'll be there. That. I you'll be that. there. You'll I be there. That. And but you're surrounded by Hall of Famers, oh, and you're man, just as them. you know equivalent as to any one of them. You oh, know no them, question. and no question. And your mindsets are all the same. So yeah. it's an amazing process. And then now you've been through the whole walk of life. Well, I tell you what, if this, if what I've started doing here with TGH, if I can just catch a couple kids just to. Change things a little bit, you know. Mm-hmm. It, it would be it would be a blessing because I tell you what, yeah. 
you know, some of the kids, you know, don't have the opportunity to have the things that we are having or our children are having, right? They don't have the opportunity to eat healthy. They don't have that. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? There's yeah. a lot of just things. Just the resources, that, too. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things that go with it. Yeah. But if they can just change something, yeah. you know, hopefully it'll make them live a little better. Well, we definitely know you have the Hall of Fame for life. You oh. you, you definitely have have that honor. and and for sure. That's that's something that no one could ever take away. No, I'm here. Well, thank Cecil, God. I want I want to thank you for coming. I appreciate I, I loved you. Hearing it. Yeah, I appreciate you having me. And definitely hope- would love to see where this goes also, right? We will definitely work with the community and work with local hospitals, including like Tampa General. Yes, that's sir. one of the places that really uh, got you through all of this. Yeah. And, and hopefully we can start exposing this and, and see where it goes. Hey, let's do what we do. Definitely. All, All right. right well, thank friend. you for coming. It's Thanks been a for pleasure. Having me. Thank you. Thank you.